Are you a good puppy? Yes. Hello, this is Mark Abelli with The Art of Diesel, where we're all about diesel and automotive performance, efficiency, and independence. Today I'm still going to be covering maintenance on Ivana, the turbo diesel, the E320 CDI that I'm working on. It's a W211 chassis and that I picked up in Florida back in December and I'm going to be doing some modifications but we have to have a solid foundation work from. So today I'm going to be showing some of the things I did with the transmission to make certain that uh, I wouldn't have any problems uh, in that department. So. Uh, let me get on with it. I wind up uh, covering the flushing and filling of the transmission. The flushing isn't as good a flush as I would like it to be, uh, but let me cover that and I'll cover some of the things I learned along the way. I also replaced the cannon plug, which is a known issue on these NAG1 transmissions, which are found not only in Mercedes-Benz, but also in some Chrysler products from this time frame. So anyhow, let's let's get on with it. So I get underneath the car and the first thing I do is pull the plug from the transmission oil pan. You can see the nice dark color of that. Okay, so it's not so nice. Um, but it definitely reinforces this needed to be done. When I go to remove the pan, I don't actually wait for everything to drain. It's still dripping, but I take out the four corners first because that way I can actually just remove the two on the sides last. So I loosen one side, do the opposite side, completely remove it while I'm supporting the pan with my hand, take out that last bolt, and then I dump it into the pan that I'm using to capture the uh, transmission fluid. Allow it to dump out. Then I take it over to the workbench and give it a good, nice clean up and make sure to clean that magnet that's down in there. It gets a lot of metal filings and stuff like that. I wouldn't say it was excessive, but it did have some. Every transmission I've ever worked on had some. I just removed the gasket, clean it up some more. Let's put a new gasket on there. And wipe it down a little more. Okay, now I can remove the old filter and install the new filter. There's a little tab that needs to go in the right place there. Okay. After I remove the fan, which actually takes quite a bit of work, I get a socket the right size and ratchet. And I put it down in there and I leave it so the ratchet hangs down so I can rotate it while I'm below the engine. Here I've removed the covers. I'm looking at the torque converter while I rotate the engine. Excuse the shakiness, the head bobbing. I am turning over a diesel from underneath the engine while I'm trying to look at the torque converter at the same time. And guess what? There's no plug on this thing. So anyhow, I wind up going ahead and reinstalling the pan. Now, installation is reverse removal, as they say. I go ahead and I put it on the two side ones first, which holds the pan in place. And you'll see that I checked the gasket to make sure everything was in place before I started putting on the four corners. And I just kind of get them down to the right level using you know my fingers hit them with a ratchet just enough to to get a feel for it then i get the torque wrench out and i go to the proper torque spec from the workshop instruction system of course i also get the uh the cover the heat shield cover on and install the plug for the oil pan i had the proper torque for that too so i went ahead and used it brand new copper washer in there along with the filter and gasket now i start measuring transmission fluid to put into the car and I start dumping it in. Now I made the mistake of thinking well this takes a certain amount of transmission fluid so I should put that amount in. What I neglected to consider was the fact that well because I can't remove the plug there is no plug on the torque converter I wind up overfilling the thing. So once you put the transmission fluid in you got to start the engine and run back and forth through the gears a few times then you have to use this aftermarket dipstick because a car doesn't come with one, it just has a cap on there. With this thing, you just have to develop a feel for when you're all the way down. There's an elbow in there, so I wasn't getting the stick in all the way right away, so it comes out basically dry. 
I try it again and I realize there's an elbow I have to get past and it's a matter of feel. There, I think I found the bottom here. Okay, now when I pull it out, I take a look and I can see I've massively overfilled. You can see the fluid is all the way down to my hand. So I go ahead and drain a couple quarts. I check it again. Well, I, you know, I run it through the gears again. Then get out the dipstick and check it again. And find out it was still too high. So I drain some more. And by the way, look at the color of the fluid. I haven't changed that much of the fluid. So now I know that I'm going to need to replace it more than once in order to really flush it out and dilute the old oil. You can see here that it's a little on the low side. But what I really noticed was the color. So I wound up deciding to drain all of it, well, as much as I can from the plug. And by doing this, I can go ahead and put some more in. I've got plenty of the fluid laying around. So what I'm doing is I'm basically diluting it by changing it multiple times. Go through the gears with the engine running. With the engine still running again, of course, I check the dipstick and here, when you flip it over and check the backside, you can see that I've got the level right to where it should be, which is the top end of the cold range on the dipstick. Now that I've done that, I go ahead and put the cap back on with a fresh O-ring and a fresh red tab that kind of locks it in place. So this simply gets pushed down over the dipstick tube and then you insert the red tab and that locks it. When you go to remove it, you'll break the red tab. The kit I bought had the dipstick and a number of the red tabs. So after I'd done all this, a new cannon plug had come and I knew I needed to replace that because they're known for leaking. Oil will get all the way up the wiring harness and into the transmission control unit. So I decided I would replace that. Now, by pulling the tab down and rotating it, I'm able to release the connector and I tuck the connector up out of the way by running it over the top of this bracket here for now. You wouldn't want to do that if the engine was hot. And then there's a, there's a bolt inside there, a tiny little bolt. And so I use a quarter inch drive set and I get the bolt out. Then I start wiggling it. Now do not twist this when you're removing it because there are pins, you'll screw up the pins. Also make sure you got a pan handy. Now the other thing I'm going to point out, see this o-ring I was just showing you? <laughs> that was still in there when I tried to put the new one in, it was in the way. So um, you really have to get that out of the way and then you have to align it carefully by looking at the tabs, looking at the pins, and carefully work it in. It took some doing but after I got it in, was able to tighten the bolt. And then you got to hook this up so that the connector goes upwards and get it to engage the threads in that yellow plastic piece then when you rotate the plastic piece it pulls it into the connector and onto the pins and voila that's done but of course I dumped a bunch of fluid all over the place so I'm not at the proper level anymore of course I got to put the heat shield back on that's pretty straightforward tab sticks underneath a little thing up above and then you bolt it down So here, yeah, I've just drained it again. And from here, I wind up going ahead and putting more fluid in, checking it again with the dipstick. And I would say for now, the transmission is good to go. I'm gonna continue to monitor the color of the fluid and I'll probably wind up changing it again in order to dilute it. At this point, the transmission is pretty much ready to go. I might still flush it some more by simply dumping out fluid and replacing it in the future. I'll just pay attention on what color the fluid is. It, it is a, a difficult process to do it this way. However, while some people will talk about a process that you can use to flush fluid yourself, if you don't do it right, you can easily screw up the transmission. It's better to go through some fluid, which even though it looks kind of expensive, is a lot less expensive than the transmission would be to replace, rebuild, etc. So now the transmission is pretty much ready to go for now. I may wind up 
replacing fluid again later just depends on how it looks after it's been driven some. The next step after this I've been making modifications to the intake manifold. In my next video I will show you the work that I've done to clean up the intake manifold, get rid of obstructions, and make some other modifications in order to maximize the efficiency and performance of this engine. So stay tuned and you'll see some more on this channel soon. Thanks for watching.